coping saw, a uh, pretty inexpensive little saw, probably about 10 maybe $15, uh, hardware store. One of the things, a uh, coping saw is more related to the Japanese type saws. On a Japanese saw, they cut on the pull stroke. Everything they do is they, they pull. On the American saws, we push, okay? But on a coping saw, it is a pull type saw. You don't want to push because if you push, what happens is this mechanism gets loose and your blade pops off. And for those of you that say, well, I can, no, I can go ahead and do it. Go ahead and try, try coping with a blade put in backwards. And when you're pushing down, it's gonna, it's gonna pop off on you. Okay, coping saws, they all, you know, you can turn this handle, and you think, well, you gotta turn that handle to replace that blade because there's tension on there. No, do not do that. I've seen so many people, they keep turning that, turning that, and then all of a sudden it goes, Ping! and this thing shoots out, and this uh, head right here is flying off into, into the yonder. And then you spend about five minutes trying to figure it out, and it's over there. And you thought it went there because it goes so fast. Do not turn these, you know, unscrew these. What that's for is sometimes you're going to be cutting down and you, instead of cutting uh, down, you want to be cutting to the side, but you want to have your saw up top. So you're going to be cutting this way, so you need to turn your blade. And we're not going to get into that here. Uh, an easy way, or the really the, the way to change a blade is just to press down, push, push this together and take the blade out. Now, sometimes people don't quite understand how to put the blades back in, which is the right way and which is the wrong way. What you want to do is hold the blade. If you can pull your finger across it coming up without it catching, then you're going to hold the blade correctly. Pushing it down, it's going to want to cut your finger. Okay, it grabs your finger. That is correct. If you have it the other way, up is going to cut your finger and down is going to be not good. So, you want to have the teeth pointing up, pointing towards you. There's a, a little slot this thing slides into. And on the end, there's little pins that catch. So you just press it together until the pins drop into the slot and there you go. That's, that's as tight as it needs to be. We're going to use this uh, chair railing as our molding. It's, it's got uh, a curved edge here and a couple of flat spots and then a couple of 90s on it, which is very easy for our coping saw to, to maneuver through. And again, this railing goes about you know, chair height around your room. So the back of your chairs hit right here. Okay? Unless you have weird chairs. What you're going to need to do is to cut a piece about 16 inches long. And then you need to cut a piece that's about 2 inches long. The 2 inch piece, you just simply take this, slide it in. Like that. Take your pencil it's a little hard sometimes to hold it. And this is where you unite a good sharp pencil. Okay? Now, what I do is I come on up here at the top and I make my angle cut. And I do the same thing on the bottom. I mark my angle. Basically, the white is going to be the point. And I'll guarantee you, some of you guys will cut these backwards to where the brown is gonna be your point. And it won't work that way. We want this front part, the white part, to fit inside here. The other thing, the other problem that you guys will have is sometimes you'll turn this upside down. 
where you have the fat part and the skinny part together. And you'll trace it, cut it out, and then you bring it over to me and say, I don't understand, why doesn't it fit? You gotta have the fat part and the fat part together, the skinny part and the skinny part together. Okay? I like to keep mine as close to the vise as possible. If you have it clear out here, what's going to happen is, you know, you get it out here, you're going to have a lot of wiggle onto it. So try to get it as close as you can. And then what I do, and I just simply eyeball it. I don't have to, you know, we don't want a 90 degree cut. We just want something back in this area. Okay? Wider than a than a 90 degree corner, it's still it's still hitting the points. Okay, if it's narrower than 90, it's still hitting the points. Okay, and that's the whole thing. Your wall doesn't. You don't have to go through and measure all your walls. And, you know, make sure this one's that angle, this one's that angle. Just simply, you know, guess up an angle. Get this uh, cut backwards. And follow that depth all the way through. Okay? So you're going to need about a 16 inch piece and a 2 inch piece. 